Right now, Madison police say they want to prevent future Mifflin Street block parties from happening. This after dozens of arrests, including a Badger football player. Also, several people are hurt in Milwaukee after a driver in a stolen vehicle slams into a school bus. And residents in Rock County running out of time to reduce nitrate levels in the groundwater. The programs you need to know about limiting exposure. Welcome to News 3 Now at 6. We have had enough. That's the message from the Madison PD tonight about the Mifflin Street block party. Police said today they are personally and professionally fed up with the annual unsanctioned event, announcing that they are actively working to bring it to an end next year. Our Arman Rahman is live on Mifflin Street now with more. Arman? Yeah, Eric and Charlotte, police say the tipping point this year was a crowd size and drunkenness that they haven't seen before, which is why MPD says that they are committed working with UW Police Department, the university itself, and landlords to somehow put an end to this kind of block party. Now, officers attribute this year's behavior mostly to the 74 Borgs, or blackout rage gallons of alcohol, they confiscated on the street alone. Authorities are still counting the exact number of arrests and citations, but they say anecdotally, people were allegedly swinging around traffic poles like weapons, climbing trees to grab power lines just a year after the balcony collapsed. We each year dodge a major catastrophe, whether it's physical with a porch collapsing or whether it's a weapons violation and that frightens us because things become unpredictable. And Captain Mike Hansen also says they took at least 20 individuals to a hospital for detox and while doing so one person allegedly assaulted a nurse and their condition is still unknown tonight. Now, within the last hour, a UW Madison spokesperson sent me a statement which said in part that the university is interested in learning how MPD plans on addressing Mifflin next year. And I talked to a couple students here today who don't know how they could do it either, but they say that they didn't see a problem with the party this year. For now, live on Mifflin Street, Armand Rahman, News 3 Now. One of those arrests involved Wisconsin football player Marcus Allen. Today, Madison police are confirming a gun found in Allen's bag during the arrest was reported as stolen from a vehicle last summer. At a press conference today, Madison Police Captain Mike Hansen said he did not have any details yet on how Allen got the gun. Hansen said Allen was approached by officers during the block party because he had an open intoxicant. Police also were not able to say whether the gun in Allen's bag was loaded, but said just the presence of the gun was a cause for concern to them. For us, it's a behavior. It doesn't matter who it is, and, and what's scary is the fact that there's a gun in a very large, unpredictable, intoxicated crowd. The Dane County Sheriff's Office told News 3 Now on Sunday that Allen was facing potential charges of being armed while intoxicated. So far, Allen has not been charged with a crime. He was bailed out of jail on Saturday. Dramatic video from Milwaukee after a reckless driver in a stolen vehicle crashed into a school bus, injuring several people. It happened outside Morse Middle School for the gifted and talented a little before 9 this morning. There you see it. An 11-year-old who was on the bus was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries, but a 15-year-old who was in that vehicle that struck the bus is now in the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Several other occupants of the vehicle fled the scene on foot. Milwaukee police are now investigating and looking for suspects. A gloomy start to May. Let's check your first warned forecast. Here's Julian C. Right, Julian? Well, the winds are definitely howling on our weather patio as we're getting into the rest of our first warned forecast. The good news is, is that we are, we'll see improvements later into the week, but for tonight, heading into tomorrow, folks, it's still going to be rather breezy. Now, we luckily don't have wind advisories for southern Wisconsin, but our friends to the southern parts of Iowa and the northeastern side of, uh, northwestern side, excuse me, of uh, Illinois is looking into those wind advisories to be in effect until 7 p.m. heading into tonight. Now, one thing we are going to be watching for is just the developments of these winds as they continue throughout the rest of tonight. Now, gusting right now, 28 miles per hour, around 35 for Mineral Point and 33 for Janesville. So they've tapered off just a bit in terms of intensity, but they even hit around 40 miles per hour early into this afternoon. Now, we aren't looking at much more activity in terms of showers for us here in southern Wisconsin, but our friends to the east, just outside of Watertown, still dealing with a little bit of that, and that's going to linger into the later parts of tonight. Now, for us here in Madison, the 
sun has started to show itself. Clouds are starting to break up. Still have a low level deck, but the upper 40s are going to remain throughout the rest of this evening. But tonight will start to slide into around the upper 30s once we get into the overnight hours. And many of us are going to be into the upper 30s near 40 degrees overnight heading into tomorrow where we are looking for temperatures to be rather similar for this afternoon, which was the lower 50s, a couple areas into the middle 50s. But again, it's going to be those gusts that we're going to be talking about lingering over the next 24 hours. So we'll be planning out the rest of our Tuesday in a few moments. Until then, that's you guys. Julian, thank you. If you live in Rock County, you have a limited amount of time left before two programs to mitigate health risks from nitrates run out. Too much nitrates in your water can lead to a number of health issues, including birth defects and thyroid disease. Our Kyle Pazorski shares how you can reduce your risk. Well, high nitrate levels have been an ongoing issue in Rock County over the past several years. Currently, people there could be eligible for either a state or county program to fix, replace, or use a treatment system to reduce their exposure. Nitrates are natural in our groundwater. Even though nitrates are natural, there comes an increased risk of health complications if too much is consumed. They increase when we impact the land, particularly with things like fertilizers, egg fertilizers, lawn fertilizers, um, septic systems are another uh, source of nitrates getting in the water. Rick Wiederson serves as Rock County's environmental health director. He tells me that as each year goes by, nitrate levels increase. As we have more inputs on our land, uh, the nitrates have increased over the years. This online mapping tool from the county shows where nitrate levels are high. There is good news, though. Rock County residents can take advantage of two different programs to mitigate their risk. If they have nitrates uh, over 10 parts per million, they would be eligible for the state funding and possibly for the county funding. He does say, however, that funding could dry up as soon as the end of this year. There's a, a set amount of funding available, so if that uh, funding dries up, um, the fund will no longer exist. If you're looking to reduce your risk of nitrate consumption, you're encouraged to contact the Rock County Public Health Department. We have the number to call in this article on channel3000.com. A new bill would allow 14-year-olds in Wisconsin to serve alcohol to seated customers in bars and restaurants. Under current law, only workers 18 and above can serve alcohol to customers in the state. The bill would broaden that to workers ages 14 to 17. They can only serve to seated customers, not drinkers who are at the bar itself. The two Republican sponsors of the bill say the current age limit on serving alcohol is causing workforce issues. The measure is a long way from becoming law. It must pass the Senate and Assembly and be signed by Governor Tony Evers. A failed referendum in Milton last month is leaving its schools to figure out a new plan for finances. The district superintendent tells us this is something many districts in the state are having to respond to as well in the coming months. Our Catherine Merck explains what the district's plan will mean for staff, students, and their families. Without the additional operating funds uh, that we had asked for in the referendum, we will need to make some reductions uh, to our spending. The school district of Milton has had to face the challenges of adjusting to a budget without the $9.5 million that didn't pass the April 4th ballot. I think that we're working through the process of, of identifying where we're going to make reductions for the coming year. The superintendent told me one of the ways it's first responding to a lack of funds is by not hiring current open positions. So we know that in order to make uh, significant reductions, not just for this year, but in future years too, uh, we will have to uh, make some reductions to the number of people that we have. Rich Dahman says that's because 75 to 80 percent of the district's budget goes toward paying for its employees. Funding after a failed referendum is not something that's just affecting families in Milton. Last month on For the Record, the Wisconsin Association of School Boards said a record number of referendums failed in Wisconsin this election cycle. At a time when we're concerned about student achievement recovering from the pandemic, um, having to make those kinds of cuts in programs and staff is particularly um, Worrisome. The districts that are able to uh, pass local operating referendums are able to offer opportunities and programs for students that districts that don't have that additional revenue aren't able to offer. Milton's superintendent says the school board will present its preliminary budget at its second meeting in June. And then we'll see um, how much additional revenue the state does come through uh, with for, for schools and then look at what additional changes we need to make as we're planning for the future. Reporting in Milton, I'm Catherine Merck, News 3 Now.
Coming up, Kohl's makes a large donation in honor of National Mental Health Awareness Month. What that money will be used for. Plus, the Boys and Girls Club of Wisconsin opening its 200th location today. What it means for the children of Columbia County. Next at 6. If you're having shoulder pain, I would recommend OrthoTeam because I can do anything that I want to do. And before I went, it was hard to do anything. And the staff there is wonderful. Keep your home's exterior protected with Menard's great selection of exterior paints and stains. Dutch Boy Exterior Stain and Sealer is dirt and scuff resistant to preserve the wood's natural beauty and begins repelling rain in just four hours after application. Pick up a gallon for $31.99 after sale price and rebate. Try Cabot Premium Stains and Finishes for unbeatable quality and protection against weathering for your exterior wood surfaces. Australian Timber Oil is $49.98 plus 11% off. Save big money at Menard's. To everyone who appreciates a handcrafted meal, are you ready for a taste of Wisconsin? Butterburgers cooked fresh, just the way you like. The way you love. Definitely love. And our thick and creamy frozen custard, we make it for you all throughout the day. All day. All day, every day. Put it in the extra work and not cutting corners. It takes a little longer. But it's how we've always done it at Culver's. Because making your meal with care shows how much we care. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome to Delicious. Steinhoffel's Memorial Day preview event is on now. Find amazing bonus buys, like a Beautyrest Queen mattress, just $4.49. This sofa, now $6.99. Queen bed, only $10.99. Or this dining room table for $10.89. Plus, with Steinhoffel's special 72-month financing, your new room just got even more affordable. It's the Memorial Day preview event, only at Steinhoffel's and Steinhoffel's.com. Relax, it's Steinhoffel's. If you're having shoulder pain, I would recommend OrthoTeam because I can do anything that I want to do. And before I went, it was hard to do anything. And the staff there is wonderful. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. The Boys and Girls Club is expanding its reach to Columbia County, opening the state's 200th location today. That building, the former Rush Elementary School in Portage, the Portage Community School District closed the doors to that building last school year. Karen DeSanto, the CEO for the West Central Wisconsin Boys and Girls Club, says the process of bringing a location to Portage has been a challenging but rewarding one for a long overdue addition in Columbia County. Kids today just need a place to belong, right? So clubs historically have been a club, much like we would belong to a country club or some kind of organization. Kids can belong to the Boys and Girls Clubs. DeSanto stressed the importance of Boys and Girls Clubs around the country in providing children with extra education help they occasionally cannot get elsewhere. Department store company Kohl's is donating $3 million to Children's Wisconsin for three new mental health walk-in clinics. According to Kohl's, the intent of the donation is to open one clinic location each year over the next three years. The clinics provide mental health support to kids between the ages of 5 and 18 and are staffed with licensed therapists and social workers. The locations for those clinics have not been selected but will be spread throughout the state. The CDC is ending its COVID-19 community level system. Initiated in February of 2022, it used the color system to indicate levels of COVID infection, but the nation's public health emergency expires on May 11th. After that, health departments will not be required to submit COVID-19 numbers to the CDC. Instead, the agency will rely on cases serious enough to require hospitalization to track the disease. That's how infections like the flu are now tracked. After the break, the Hilldale Farmers Market returns this weekend. Find out what's new this year. Also, the price of produce is on the rise. What some supply chain experts say is part of the cause and why that issue may help farmers in the future. Plus, chilly temperatures today, but a warm-up is on the horizon. And Julian will have your complete forecast when we come back. Did you leave the lights on? No. What the... I'll go check it out. Hey, 
I'm not a raccoon whisperer, but I can help you upgrade all this. With free installation on Feltco windows, siding, doors, and roofing, plus no money down and no interest for one year, there's never been a better time to upgrade your home. This offer ends soon. Hurry. Call now. Call 866 for Feltco. Everybody wants a wider smile because having white teeth projects self-care, confidence, and attractiveness. Whether you're on the dating scene, interviewing for a new job, or simply looking to improve your smile, what you need is Power Swabs. Power Swabs is as easy as snap, swab, and smile. You'll notice two shades wider teeth in five minutes and six shades in seven days. The thing I love about Power Swabs is the convenience. I mean, just you break it open, just rub it on your teeth, just like your brushing your teeth let it sit there for a little bit um, and you're done so I noticed I have a lot more stains on the sides right here so with the power swab I was able to go in there and really make sure that I was getting that coverage and it really did work just snap the stain out swab to remove stains from natural teeth as well as caps, crowns, and veneers. Then snap the whitening swab to whiten your teeth six shades in seven days. Finally, smile and show off your pearly whites. It's five minutes in the morning and I'm out the door and it's amazing. It's a week's worth of five minutes a day and I, I couldn't be happier with the results. With power swabs, there's no messy strips, trays, or lights that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Whether you smoke or drink coffee, tea, or wine, Power Swabs is sure to lift those stains with zero to minimal sensitivity. Just a simple five-minute application, and each day you'll be one step closer to smiling with confidence. Having shades lighter on my teeth in such a short period of time, um, it almost feels like cheating, to be honest with you, and I, it tickles me that, that can, you can get those kind of results in that short a time period. Try Power Swabs this Mother's Day and get 50% off your order and free shipping. Plus, get a free quick stick pen to remove those coffee, wine, or smoking stains on the go. Visit powerswabs.com or call the number on your screen. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. The Hilldale Farmer's Market is set to return this Saturday. It features dozens of vendors selling cheese, locally grown produce, bakery items, and more. This year will feature several new vendors such as Blue House Blooms and Supreme Seafood. The market will be located in the parking lot behind L.L. Bean just off of Sego Road. It will continue every Wednesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. through October the 28th. You know, you probably noticed prices for produce have been going up at your local grocery stores. It's the result of some big weather events hurting farms Around the world, floods earlier this year in California's salad bowl devastated all kinds of crops from lettuce to strawberries and crop issues here in the Midwest led to higher feed costs for ranchers and many are now raising fewer cattle. However, extreme weather may also have provided at least one benefit. All that rain out in California that damaged crops also helped fill the state's reservoirs running low after years of drought. And now the farmers in the next planting season will, will be able to tap that water. And of course, that water should help bring produce prices back down a little bit later this year. We really don't need any more water in these parts, but it's <laughs> cold and wet to start May. Here's Julian with the forecast. Now, that's right. But before we get into the forecast, we have our first warm weather contest for the umbrella, and we're going to give it off to our winner, who is Jim Parker of Wanakee, who was able to give us such an adorable photo of his granddaughter holding an umbrella. Now, for those who are going to or looking to get a first worn umbrella, it's easy to enter the contest. All you got to do is submit your photo to win, and we will choose the best ones that are going to be given to us. Just go to the first one at WICTV.com or use the first one weather app to submit your photo, and we'll be choosing at the 6 p.m. top of the hour and also in the morning with Kelly Slifka to also give you or show who the winner is. Now, outside of that, let's talk about the forecast, starting off with our weather headlines. Our three things we're going to need to know to kick things off for us. Well, folks, we are going to be starting to see some chillier conditions for us and on top of it well we're also going to be looking for a bit of those winds as well we had a little bit of an issue but this is what we're going to see for our service map the low pressure system which is just off over the great lakes near canada has been rather robust which has really tightened in those iso bars which has brought in windy conditions throughout much of the upper midwest and that's going to continue throughout the next 24 hours so those gusts that were reaching around 40 miles per hour will continue heading into the night start to taper off just a bit but heading into tuesday we're still looking at breezy conditions and it's going 
going to be a rather chilly to kick off our first week of May. Now the rain and the stuff that we did experience early into our morning is done for us here in Madison and much of southern Wisconsin. Just seeing a little bit of some lingering showers mainly east or along I-41, but otherwise things are going to stay rather dry. Now the gusts, we're going to see those taper off in intensity heading into the overnight, but from Madison and the areas to the east, we're still going to be hearing those howling winds throughout the overnight hours. Waking up for tomorrow morning, still going to be more or less the same. The lower 30 miles per hour gusting winds are what we're going to be anticipating to be on and off throughout the course of our morning and a pick up in intensity throughout southern Wisconsin heading into our early Tuesday afternoon. So be prepared for another windy day and some chilly conditions. Tonight our temperatures will fall into the upper 30s. Still going to have a bit of some cloud cover that's going to return for us heading into tomorrow. We are expecting another cloudy day. I'm going to need too much in terms of the sunglasses, but temperatures will be rather similar to what they were for us today into the lower 50s with a high around 51 degrees. Tomorrow for areas to the west and southwest, Platteville around 53 degrees, 53 for Lone Rock and 52 for Janesville. But again, be prepared for that to feel a bit chillier because of those winds. Now take a look at our future track. Any shower activity is mainly going to be north and east of Dane County, especially around the three o'clock hour looking for a bit of that mixing as temperatures do fall just near the freezing point might see a couple of spray little sprinkles going into our early morning but overall things are going to stay rather dry and as we get to the lunchtime hour into our early afternoon might see a couple of showers but the lower 50s and again those temperatures are still going to be rather chilly with those winds at our backs taking a look at our first worn 10 day forecast we are going to see things improve it's just going to take patience over the next couple of days we'll see the 60s heading into our Wednesday, then finally heading into the weekend. We are looking for those upper 60s and even 70 degrees by the time we get into Sunday. The best part about it, not looking for too much in terms of rain conditions, but we are still seeing some sunshine and the warmer weather on the way. All right, looking forward to it, Julian. Thank you. Air show fans can now buy tickets to this year's Milwaukee Air and Water Show. Spectators can anticipate aerial performances, including the Navy Blue Angels and the U.S. Air Force F-16 team. That show held along McKinley Park at Bradford Beach on the coast of Lake Michigan will be the only performance by the Blue Angels in the state of Wisconsin this year. The popular event runs July 22nd and 23rd. For ticket information, visit mkeairwatershow.com or call that number there at the bottom of your screen. If you love hiking in Wisconsin, you can now show support for one of the state's longest trails on the front and back of your car. The Wisconsin DOT unveiled this new license plate today honoring the Ice Age Trail. The plate can be ordered online or by mail. The fees for the special plate include a $25 tax deductible tax deductible contribution to the Ice Age Trail Alliance, a one-time $15 issuance fee, the standard vehicle registration fee, and an additional $15 if you want a personalized plate. Six state appearances, but none since 2019. Edgewood Girls Soccer tells me why this year they want to get back and get that gold ball. I have that story next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. As summer approaches, is your house ready? Over 7 out of 10 homes are poorly insulated. Is yours? Here are some of the signs. Is your house too cold in the winter? Is it too hot in the summer? Does your furnace and AC run almost nonstop? Do you have different temperatures in different rooms? Are your energy bills too high? You don't need a new home. You need better insulation. And right now, during Home Improvement Month, our labor is free. But that ends May 31st. USA Insulation. At Wheatman Lawn Care, we believe that a lush, beautiful lawn should be enjoyed by the whole family. That's why we offer a kid and pet friendly program to create a healthier, greener, weed free lawn that your whole family can enjoy. Our program includes effective applications of targeted weed control and slow release golf course quality fertilizer to achieve real results. Call or click today for your free quote or sign up now and see the Weed Man difference. Doesn't your family deserve a Weed Man lawn? <laughs> this is Matt Gunderson. We recently celebrated the life of Margaret, who never let a cookie jar run empty. Her service was cookie themed, with everyone enjoying her tasty treats. Allow us to personalize every detail of a life well lived. 
Welcome to the Spectrum Lab, where we're bringing you the best in connectivity with Spectrum One. Get Spectrum One with Spectrum Internet for $49.99 a month, plus advanced Wi-Fi, plus your first line of Spectrum Mobile Unlimited, free for 12 months. Call 833-823-4999. Spectrum Internet delivers the fastest internet speeds in the nation, so you always have the speed you need for all your connected devices. This guy gets it. Advanced Wi-Fi comes with state-of-the-art security and privacy, which automatically blocks online threats on all your devices. If it's connected, it's protected. Plus, Spectrum Mobile gives you unlimited talk, text, and data on a reliable nationwide network. At Spectrum, we're always working to bring you better ways to connect. You think they noticed the orb? I think so. Get Spectrum One with Spectrum Internet for $49.99 a month, plus advanced Wi-Fi, plus your first line of Spectrum Mobile Unlimited, free for 12 months. Call 833-823-4999. Visit Spectrum.com or Spectrum Store today. Play games and win prizes to benefit survivors of domestic abuse. Tomorrow, Josh is in the 608 with a preview of Felicia's Donation Closet Casino Night. And you'll just have to hang on for another day. We do have some warmer weather in the forecast this week. Join us tomorrow between 4.30 and 7. You know the saying, all gas, no brakes? Well, that's exactly Edgewood Girls Soccer. The season off to an undefeated start with their sights clearly set on getting back to state for the first time since 2019. And as I found out, whatever is thrown at this group, they are just keeping, they just keep charging ahead. Number one in their division, 10 and 0 record and have eight shutouts on the season. Yeah, Edgewood is really good at soccer. For us right now, it's been about winning and learning, not winning or learning. Part of that learning process is reloading the roster after graduating over 10 seniors. The key has been some of the kids who had not as high of a role on the team last year stepping into starting roles and performing roles very, very well and very, very naturally. And also not repeating last season's finish, one win short of state. We got almost, almost a taste of what it's like to get to state and now we just all really want that. So no doubt the goal is to hoist the gold ball over their heads in June. Being a senior and never being able to make it that far, like, it would be huge for everyone and just to, like, show that all our hard work is, like, coming to an end point. To finish my high school career off, that would be something that I'd be so excited to do and really hoping that I can help push all the other girls to get to that point because it just seems like it'd be an amazing experience. But to get there, the Crusaders just have to keep winning and learning. Badger women's basketball is adding to its staff as they welcome Wisconsin native Tiffany Morton on as an assistant coach. Morton played at UW Whitewater. She was part of the 2008 Division III Final Four squad and has more than 10 years of coaching experience. Her most recent stint was with Rice University. After a week of big decisions, the Packers have another one with a pretty tight deadline. This time, it's whether or not they're going to pick up Jordan Love's fifth-year option. That's about $20 million and needs to be decided by tomorrow. Love was drafted back in 2020, and since then, he's played in 10 games with only one start. Well, here's what Packers GM Brian Gutekunst had to say over the weekend about it. We're kind of still working through that. We've been so focused on the draft. We've had some preliminary conversations, but we'll get to that. It's a lot of money for a guy who hasn't, you know, played. But um, at the same time, obviously, we're, we're moving forward with him. So we'll, we'll figure that out by Tuesday. And the Packers just keep adding to the roster, agreeing to terms with 12 undrafted free agents today. So ahead of rookie minicamp that's set for this weekend, the roster sits at 88 players. All right, Jordan, thank you. Let's go to Julian for a final check of the forecast. Well, things are going to stay windy and chilly, but that's only for the next about 24 hours. Because Then we're going to start to warm up. 60s are in the forecast, finally, into the upper 60s, near 70. So it's finally going to feel like spring once we get towards the weekend and even for next week. All right, Julian, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Have a great evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.